guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today, we're going to go ahead and tier every single card in Clash Royale. After the balance changes, we have enough of data to kind of actually uh, make some uh, observations about card strength in the game. So without further ado, there's a lot of cards to get to here, guys. There's a lot to get to. Let's start with the wizard. I think wizard is C tier. Wizard use rates are still very high, 14% on ladder, uh, but the win rates are crappy. They're 46, 45% right now. Uh, barely ever using competitive in challenges. He's an all right card. You can have success with wizard, but he's not a superstar, especially in the range troop category. Zap is A tier. Zap is always A tier in my mind. Zap is a very, very good small spell, uh, especially in bridge spam decks. And that you need to kill those small distraction units like Skeleton, Skarmie, etc. Especially with the prevalence of Skarmie and the Skeleton King right now, Zap is definitely handy to have in your deck. Zappies are S tier, baby! Zappies are so good right now, guys. They have a very healthy, almost 60% win rate on ladder. That's very, very high. Their use rate is 7% in Grand Challenges as well, so really starting to creep more and more into the meta. If you haven't tried Zappies yet, Give them a try. They're very, very good right now. The Battle Healer, F tier. Battle Hero is one of the worst cards in the game right now. There are so many, many better options at 4 Elixir than the Battle Healer, who has a whopping 39% win rate at the time of this recording inside Grand Challenges. That's awful, 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 awful. The Battle Ram, however, is very good right now. I'm going to give the Battle Ram A tier. So Battle Ram, very healthy win rates, very healthy use rates as well. Uh, nothing too crazy, but after the small nerf to the snare ability of the Ram Rider, it's good a little bit more room for the battle ram to shine in bridge spam decks uh however i will say that elite barbarians are actually way up in terms of use rate as well so some players bridge spam are opting to actually play elite barbarians over battle ram you can make a case maybe b tier and maybe i'll put b plus a minus uh the bomber i think the little fella is very very solid for two elixir you almost you almost want to go a i, I do want to go a minus on the bomber right because two elixir right splash damage a decent amount of splash damage when they brought the bomber down to elixir i felt like the card is just really solid can help you cycle and can be annoying for the opponent to deal with especially with royal hogs and well all the swarm again going around the meta right now bowler is also a tier guys believe it or not bowler has skyrocketed in terms of win rates one of the top 10 cards on ladder in terms of overall win percentage and uh you know part part of that is because of all the swarm again and because of uh graveyard his spot in graveyard decks which are certainly not dead after the nerf to graveyard cannon car a tier cannon car same kind of story right both on ladder and grand challenges cannon car is one of the more spell resilient cards out there in the game difficult to deal with i don't know about you guys but when i go against a cannon car I'm never really happy about it, right? I'm never excited to go against Cannon Car or Bowler. Really, any of these A-tier cards, the, the troops, that is, right? How about you guys? Do you think Cannon Card's really strong? I think pro players especially are all over Cannon Card. I think maybe more casual players don't recognize, perhaps. Uh, you know, I'm somewhere in the middle of those categories, so I have no dog in the fight, but I do think Cannon Card's very, very good. Clone, I'm going to put C-tier right now. It depends on the deck you're using Clone in. Clone's never been really super meta in the game, but... Uh, you know, never say never. Actually, Clone has been met a couple times. Lava Clone has been on top a few times, and Lava Golem's always kind of been a thing, right? So I would say that Clone is a C tier average. It's average. Uh, it, it really says more about the user and their ability to master Clone decks than it does. But is mastering Clone decks even a thing? Is it? Is it? Is it even the thing? I don't. I don't know. Uh, maybe B tier. Dark Prince. B tier, only because there's so many great options at 4 and 5 Elixir for their hardy ground troops in the game right now, but I'm almost tempted to go A tier. He's a really, really good card. I've always been a massive fan of the Dark Prince, and really kind of middle of the pack, around 5-10% uh, use rates, and around 51-55% to 55 uh, win rates in the game right now. Dark Goblin, I'm going to go A tier. You guys might think I'm crazy, but the little fella, the little machine gun Dark Goblin, dude... I don't know, man. Add them to the list of cards I hate going against, right? I hate the Dark Goblin. I hate when they drop them at the bridge and you're you're old and you're an old man and your reaction time's slow. Oh, that's 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 just me. That's just me. Who never catches Dark Goblins ever when they play them at the bridge. If you see me in the arena, just throw a Dark Goblin at the bridge. You'll get a guaranteed fireball damage or more. Uh, Archers, I'm going to go B tier. They did get a small buff, which makes them even better than they once were. I thought they were like average, just slightly above average, balanced, essentially. And they gave them a buff, so I think that archers are solid. 
Uh, Earthquake S tier. Is there ever, is there even any question, excuse me, about it? Earthquake is so strong right now, man. Ugh. It could be the strongest card in the game. Star, a strongest non-champion card in the game? What about you guys? Earthquake does more damage than Fireball for one less Elixir. It's the only thing kind of keeping Pump and Mirror Pump in check a little bit. Earthquake is everywhere and people are upset about it, generally speaking. Electro Dragon is solid. I'm going to give him a, a B tier. Nothing's really changed with Electro Dragon. Not super meta, but still a decent card to have. Uh, ooh, the Electro Giant. You guys are going to think I'm crazy, but I'm going to put him in F tier with the Battle Healer. Uh, we had a pro on Evan last week talking about the Electro Giant, right? And he said he's much worse on the offensive side of the arena, but he does work now as kind of a defensive control method on the, on the defensive side. However, you know, maybe it works for him, which is great. He's a really good player. But his win rates have plummeted after the rework. Uh, 33% in, uh, in challenge or 44% and 33% respectively in challenges and in ladder. That is an abysmal, an abysmal win percentage right now. The Electro Giant, I think they might have kind of killed them. <laughs> what about you guys? Electro Spirit, pretty, still pretty solid. I'm going to give him B tier. Uh, E-Wiz, A tier. I mean, what else is there to say about E-Wiz? He's incredible. Elite Barbarians, I'm going to give them B tier. Again, they're very popular right now. The win rates are never out of this world with Elite Barbarians, right? But long ago are the days in my, you know, in my mind at least, where people are super annoyed by Royal Giant and Elite Barbarians, you know, circa 2016, 2017, right? Uh, right now, though, they do have a 52% win rate with an 8% use rate, so not too bad. Uh, Elixir Golem, going to be F tier. Card's dead, man. I mean, you can use it, obviously. You can have fun with the card. I still think that the card is annoying as it is. It's still a unique kind of different card to have inside the game. So I like the Elixir Goal. I'm not a hater, like probably most of you guys are. Uh, however, and, and you'll notice a theme here, right? Electro Giant, uh, Battle Healer, Elixir Golem, all the cards that people really hate when they're good, they're pretty bad, and that will kind of continue a little bit. So I think the overall, the meta is in some ways healthy, in other ways, well, the Earthquake Mirror everywhere, not so much. Uh, we have the Executioner did see a little buff. I'm going to say he's B tier right now, but really we haven't seen a massive uh, difference in his win rates at all. Uh, we have Fire Spirit. I think the little fella is a B tier. Ah, it's one elixir. It's a one elixir card and always gets value, right? Always needs to be responded to as well. Uh, can pose a threat, a nice threat at the uh, the bridge unlike like skeletons uh cards like that so uh yeah for uh for one elixir i'll put him in a tier the little fella uh we have arrows up next b tier what is there to say about arrows a solid card right uh we have especially with all the swarm and the two kind of waves of arrows right fireball eh, a tier firecracker b tier she was s or a back in the last time i did this i was actually shocked to see her win rates and use rates go way down, way down. You think she'd be good against all this swarm meta, right? Believe it or not, guys, this is crazy to say. Use rates, 4%. Win rates, 35%. That doesn't even seem right to me. Uh, either way, I still think the card's pretty solid. I'm going to give her a B, despite, but I'll let you guys know. When I go against the win and the use rates, I'm going to let you guys know about it, and that's the case there with Firecracker. Uh, Fisherman is actually back in a big way, seeing him creep back into pretty much every Royal Giant deck that I've seen, uh, and kind of guest starring, guest appearances in uh, some Golem decks against some Beatdown decks, so pretty cool to see there. Uh, Flying Machine, I think, is B tier. Freeze, I think, is B tier. Giant, I think, is B tier. And Giant Skeleton is A tier now. Believe it or not, the time of this recording, Giant Skeleton is number one in at tournament level standard. 61% win rate on the new Giant Skeleton. What? What? Giant Skeleton is back. Actually, Fisherman's number two. I'm going to bump him up to A tier as well, right? Uh, Fisherman is 60% win rate as well. Albeit, the, actually, the use rate is the same between 6% on, on Fisherman, 6% on Giant Skeleton as well. Snowball, B tier. Gone Barrel, B tier. Uh, Baby D, A tier. I always think that uh, that uh, Baby Dragon is just so, so strong. Uh, Goblin Gang, though, F tier. F tier. Yeah, that's right. Goblin Gang, most people are going with guards. Uh, every deck that runs Goblin Gang has, like, on the DL, on the Hush Hush, just kind of pushed the Goblin Gang aside and gone with a different option. Uh, a whopping 3% use rate, 32% win rate. 32% win rate 
on the Goblin Gang right now. That's really, really bad. Uh, the Goblin Giant, however, uh, really, really healthy. Actually, on ladder, number two win rate in the entire game is the Goblin Giant because that one deck that he's used in, Goblin Giant and Sparky, some Goblin Giant Double Prince too, uh, is very effective and it's fairly easy to pick up and have success with, especially the Rage version, right? So we'll give him A tier. You can't really lie with the stats. Uh, Goblin, I'm going to go F tier. Uh, I actually like Goblins a little bit better than Goblin Gang, being that they're two elixirs, so you could argue maybe C. Uh, but uh, nah, they're, they're pretty bad. Eh, I don't know. I guess I'll go C. We should really have a D tier just for this reason, right? I think they're kind of in the D tier. Uh, but the same thing I said about Goblin Gang, only they do fit in other decks too, like Hog decks and stuff like that. Uh, Golem is actually pretty solid right now. I'm going to give Golem, I think we'll give him an A tier. Yeah. Uh, even in challenges, 56% win rate, that's really high for Golem on ladder, 54% win rate right now. The use rates are very, very healthy on Golem. So it looks like Golem is making kind of a little bit of a comeback, uh, creeping up to or hit, towards his win rates and use rates when he was in a lot better situation about a year ago or so. Uh, Graveyard, I'm still going to say is a, an S tier card. I mean, I'm biased. I play Graveyard, but the stats do back me up too. The, the use rates are very, very high. One of the most popular win conditions in the game at 13% in challenges, 10% on ladder. Win rates over 55% on both areas as well. I don't think the one less skeleton did a... <laughs> You know, really impacted much. However, I will note the use rate, albeit 11% right now, is down about 5%. So people seem to be kind of moving away from Graveyard and at least experimenting with other win conditions and archetypes. Guards, A tier. Guards are very, very handy right now uh, with especially, uh, well, Prince is kind of popular in the meta. Mini P.E.K.K.A. All these single target. Bandit is incredibly good inside the meta. And obviously, Guards responds to all of that stuff. Uh, Golden Knight as well. We have, and Guards are good against the Archer Queen as well. So so guards are just very, very handy. Again, being utilized uh, in almost every deck instead of the uh, the Goblin Gang. More spell resilient as well. Heal Spirit will give Heal Spirit a C. Just an average card right now. See him used in some cycle decks. We have the Balloon. We get the Balloon an A right now. I don't, still don't know how I feel about the new Balloon in the game, guys. Balloon has a 50% win rate, exactly 50-50. Maybe we'll give it a B. It's been in better situations. I feel like that rework of the balloon was a very, very slight nerf. What about you guys? Next up is going to be the Hog Rider. Hog Rider, A tier. I mean, he always gets the job done, right? I mean, Hog is one of the most difficult cards to evaluate based on the win percentage, which is very low. On ladder, it's 50%. Okay, right down the middle. Uh, challenges of 43% win rate right now. However, so many people play Hog, one of the most popular cards in the game, that I feel like uh, so many bad players play Hog too, right? So many good players play Hog too, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying when the card has this high use rates, it's tough to glean as much information from the win rates. Does it make sense? Because a wider variety of players play it because it's easier to pick up and have success with. Uh, I think that it's still a solid win condition though, the Hog right at the end of the day, whether you love it or hate it, right? Hunter, I'm going to say is A tier now. Hunter's actually pretty dang good after the buffs, uh, after being kind of relegated to maybe B or C tier, probably C tier uh, for a while. I think the Ice Golem is one of the best cards in the game. I've been saying that for a long, long time. Uh, the little fella, the little, the little, uh, you know, ice monster doesn't get the respect that he deserves. It, again, in my opinion, I think he's one of the strongest cards. He's two elixir and he, he can kite. He, he does a lot building targeting card. Uh, so I'm a big fan of the Ice Golem. Ice Spirit, after the buff i'm gonna say b tier probably c before the buff i think that the little fella is definitely viable now i will give him an a tier along with the fire spirit uh ice wizard i'm gonna give ice wizard a tier ice wizard i was so r -r 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 wrong when i said that the enter the arena ability would have no impact and it didn't make any sense for the card i will eat crow uh you know 10 times out of 10 when i get things wrong here on the channel another one coming up very soon guys stay tuned for that uh i think that the ice spirits actually uh, ice wizard excuse me is very very good inferno dragon also very good, very healthy win and use rates. Knight, uh, I'm going to say B tier. Actually, I'm going to say C tier. Knight in a vacuum is a very good card. Very good, uh, solid tank in this game for three elixir. What more could you ask? The problem is, is Valkyrie is still so much better. So is Bandit in a lot of situations. So is Golden Knight in a lot of situations. So we're just given more options. Mini P.E.K.K.A. has higher win and use rates. And again, I know they're not directly comparable, but there's a lot of ground options. Dark Prince, I can go on and on here. You guys can kind of see where I'm going. And all of those cards have much higher win and use rates than the Knight right now in the game, sadly. Uh, the Lava Hound. 
A tier because Lava Hound's always number one or number two in terms of win conditions on ladder. And it's always number eh, top two or three uh, in challenges. In challenges right now, 58% win rate on the Lava Hound on ladder over 50% as well. So uh, yeah, Lava Hound is, is still solid as ever, right? Solid as ever. Lightning, I'm going to say is A tier. I'm tempted to almost go S tier on Lightning, but I'm going to go A tier. It's the guaranteed get rid of Archer Queens, right? Bandit, I'm going to go S tier. I think the Bandit is so incredibly good, even after they changed the rework or the glitch or whatever. I think the Bandit is just one of the better legendaries in the game, obviously. Uh, psh, so much value for three Elixir. Always poses a threat. She dashes like a maniac all over the arena. Ugh, hate when she does that when I go against her. Love when it happens when you're playing the Bandit. Uh, Lumberjack, I'm going to go B tier, maybe high B, B plus. I think Lumberjack is a really, really solid card right now, but a lot of people are kind of splitting their use rates on the Lumberjack and the Mini P.E.K.K.A., Golden Knight, cards like that. Again, there's a lot of options there at the four, you know, it looks your spot. Uh, but it has that, has that rage, so really nice to have. Problem is, is the Ram Rider Lumberjack decks were super meta for a little bit there when Ram Rider was kind of getting out of control and a little bit lower win rates, about half that, that, we, that they were before on the Ram Rider that did affect the Lumberjack. Same thing with the Balloon Lumberjack as well. So uh, some... Uh, some things are out of Lumberjack's control, affecting his overall use rates and win rates. Uh, we have the Magic Archer. I'm going to say A tier still on Magic Archer. The number's a little bit lower than I expected on Magic Archer, but still, geez, Magic Archer's such a great card. And all that damage that he can get on the Tower 2 if you line him up correctly. The Mega Knight falls all the way to B tier. Tempted to even go C tier on the Mega Knight. Let me pull up the stats, see how bad they are. Ooh, wow. I'm going to go C tier on the Mega Knight. You wouldn't think that that little nerf to the the enter the arena ability would have that big of an impact on him, but 41% win rate. Use rate also has plummeted by 7%. He's only 9% uh, uh, overall use rate in the game right now. He was one of the most used card previous to the balance changes. So, I mean, I don't, I'm not a Mega Knight player myself. So you guys tell me if you played Mega Knight, have you noticed a massive difference that would kind of justify the win rates plummeting like this and the use rates? People are moving away from Mega Knight. I don't know if that's more reactive. Uh, or if it's actually based on evidence of him not being that great anymore now that he doesn't have that enter the arena damage. Uh, we'll go A tier on Mega Minion, perfectly balanced card. Gonna go A tier on Minor. Minor is tempted to just go S tier on Minor all the time because the most dynamic kind of unique card in the game, it really changed the game when they added Minor to the game back in 2016, 2017. Uh, Minor is just such a such a good card, right? Such the most versatile win condition slash quasi win condition in the game. Mini Pekka will go, I'll go B tier. I think Mini Pekka is really, really, really solid right now. Again, we kind of split the difference between Mini Pekka and uh, Lumberjack. Uh, Minion Horde, I'll go F tier. Man, Minion Horde, I just don't... With all the splash, how do you guys handle Minion Horde? Those of you who play Minion Horde, right? Surprisingly, the win percentage is over 50, 51% right now. Use rate's very low, 2%. Maybe I'll go D, a C tier. It would be D. Remind me to add D tier next time, right? Uh, regular minions will go B tier, better than Minion Horde. Mirror is S tier. Mirror is S tier. I just said that. Those are words that just came out of my mouth. I never thought I'd see the day, but... Here it is. Behold, uh, Mirror is just so good. Getting two extra levels, taking a max card to level 16 or a tournament standard to level 13 is really, really powerful, right? So you could argue that went too far. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments, but I don't know. I I've said this a few times now. I kind of like the freshness of a Mirror meta, even when watching pros play. Like how pros use mirror to me is really incredible. I'm sure I'll get sick of it eventually and be calling for a nerf, but right now I'm kind of enjoying it. Uh, how do you guys feel? Bar barrel, I'm tempted to go S tier. I'm going to. I think that bar barrel is better than log right now in the meta as it stands, especially providing a tank for graveyard decks. Uh, but it's my favorite small spell in the game right now, so I'm going to give it S tier. Uh, who the mother witch? It's mother witch is so tough. I'm going to give her C. We are seeing her a little bit more with all the Skeleton King going around. If you're a Graveyard player, again, if I rank Graveyard uh, S tier, I'm going to go C with the Mother Wish. She's definitely at the bottom of the barrel when we talk about legendary cards. And her use, her utility, I should say, is so niche. It's so matchup dependent, right? If you're not going against Swarm, you might not have a use for her the entire fight. So it's kind of feast or famine with Mother Witch. I would like to see a very small buff to Mother Witch again. Uh, what about you guys? Are you kind of happy with her not being super good? Uh, Musketeer, I'm going to go A tier. 
Surprisingly, again, on Muskie, her win rates are kind of down, you know, but I still think she's incredibly good. Uh, win rates are actually 44%. Uh, use rate 7% right now. I'm still going to go A, t- uh, a- tier on, on Musketeer. There's a lot of options in that category. She's an easy card to pick up. So, her, you know, again, I don't know. I don't know why her, her win rates are so low. Either way, though, I think that Muskie's really solid. I, I really think she's a really good card. Uh, Night Witch... I'll say is is A tier as well. She's very effective in the niche decks that she's in, beat down primarily. I'm going to go B tier with Pekka. So uh, we're seeing a lot of people move away. From, actually, I'm going to go C tier right now. I think this is the worst that Pekka has been in this meta. We're talking 44% win rates, 5% use rates. That's that tournament level standard on Pekka. People, even in bridge spam decks, are moving away from Pekka, going to like Mirror Elite Barbarians, uh, putting Prince in the deck, even Lumberjack in some decks as well. So they're looking at other options. There's a lot of responsive re- responses right now, excuse me, to the P.E.K.K.A. And again, for the hundredth time, Skeleton King being as good as he is as well creates even more of a problem. Skarmy everywhere. You don't have like 15 zaps in your deck. You can't zap everything for P.E.K.K.A. Uh, Poison right now, I'm going to say is... Ah! B or C tier? No, I'm going to say A t- I'm going to say A tier. I-, I meant to say A or B, my bad. Uh, I'm going to say A tier on Poison. Uh, Poison is just really, really solid. Maybe outshined a little bit by Fireball, by Lightning right now, but Poison's still, in my estimation, an incredibly good card. I play Poison in my main deck, and I get all kinds of value out of it. I love that it has a slow effect again in the game. Prince is B tier. Prince is super solid right now, but not broken or anything like crazy like that. A little bit above average in the B tier. Princess, kind of the same thing right now. Uh, Princess, really, really solid card, but... uh, in a vacuum, I would say, you know, similar to uh, to the Dark Goblin, but in terms of the actual stats on the princess, I have to kind of, you know, articulate that in or reflect that in these uh, in these uh, you know rankings as well, right? We're so official here on the channel, uh, so I'll give her a little bit bump down for that. Uh, Rage will go yeah, B tier, I guess. It's two elixir. It's easy to cycle, easy to get value in. If this was the how much does this card piss me off tier, I go right off tier list. I go right to S tier. Uh, but we'll go B. It's not an awful card. Again, kind of niche depending on the deck that you're playing. Ram Rider after the snare change, it was such a small change, but it did have a pretty profound effect on her win and use rates as well. But I still think she's a very good card, a very dynamic card on the defensive end and the offensive end of the arena, and a pretty easy card to pick up with and kind of understand how she works. I love that she can still, you know, if not totally stop every win condition on the defensive end, buy you a lot of time, and uh, I just like her overall versatility. Uh, the Rascals. Rascals are kind of B tier right now. Let's see what their uh, their stats are. Rascal stats right now are kind of middle of the pack, right? And that's how I feel about the card. They're very average-ish. 3% use rate, 54% win rate. So, like I said, pretty average, right? Rocket right now is A tier. Rocket cycle still a thing. I'm actually seeing some mirror rocket cycle decks. Minor rocket cycle control is, is still kind of a thing right now. Ice bow is kind of still around as well. Hog rocket is really everywhere. I'm still seeing even kind of uh, spell cycle decks with earthquake and rocket and mirror. Some really toxic, disgusting stuff, you know? Uh, might, might not be appropriate for all audiences here. Royal Delivery, I think, is one of the better spells in the game. You guys know I'm a massive a fan of Royal Delivery. The win rates are always good. The use rates are always pretty low. So wake up, play Royal Delivery. I don't know why no one plays the card. Uh, but then again, I don't play it either. Royal Ghost, very good. A tier. Royal Giant, actually really good right now. Royal Giant seeing a definite resurgence as well. Royal Giant starting to appear more and more often. A whopping 60% win rate. You know what, guys? Who I'm not going to put him S tier. I thought about it. I actually did it for a second, didn't I? Uh, but he's he's the fourth highest win rate in the game right now. So you could probably justify him going S tier. I just think it's a little bit too early. The meta will adjust. But then again, I don't... Ah! A++. There we go. Uh, Royal Hogs... I can't argue with the win rates and the use rates, or maybe not the use rates, but the win rates certainly of the Royal Hogs still holding pretty strong right now inside the meta. Uh, Again, let's see, the win rates overall are 54% on Royal Hogs, so not too bad at all. Next up is going to be Royal Recruits. I'll go C tier. Eh, This is a tough one, guys. This is a tough one. Recruits are really, nah, I got to go F tier. They're really bad. Ladder, uh, 43% win rate 
on challenges, 37% win rate, use rate to 1% and 2% respectively. Man, recruits had a little bit of time in, in, their, in the sun, right, in the meta, and then it faded away. It faded away. Skarmy is A tier primarily because of the synergy between uh, Skeleton King and Skarmy right now, and it's still a pretty solid car for 3 Elixir. Uh, I'm going to go B tier with the Skeleton Barrel, still a, uh, a viable option. Even Skeleton Dragons actually have seen a kind of a resurgence lately, right? Skeleton Dragon doing very well. 57% win rate. Still haven't been adopted at mass. 3% use rate, but still really, really healthy win uh, uh, win rates on the uh, Skeleton Dragons right now. So up quite a bit too. They're up... Uh, Win rate is up around 2% in the last week as well. Uh, we'll see Skeletons. Skeletons A tier. I mean, Little Larry, of course. Uh, Barbarian C tier. Probably D tier if I had the D category like I should. Sparky. Oddly enough, guys. Oddly enough, Sparky is actually on the rise. Where it seems like everything is going against Sparky in the game with the lightning and, and you know, E-Spirit and everything else. Uh, but... 54% win rate on Sparky. So she is climbing up from probably C last time that we did the video to B. Who knows, next time we do a tier list, it might be even A tier. Uh, I'm going to put... Um Eh, yeah, I'll put Spear Goblins in A tier. For two Elixir, you get an air targeting card, really solid card. I'm going to put B tier. I think A maybe is going a little bit too far, but they're solid. They're solid. Log A tier. Very, very good card. Obviously, I don't need to talk about the log. But more, man, oh man, oh man. Muskies, three muskies to be exact, is back in the game. They're back in the meta, just vaulted primarily because of pump. 59% win rate right now. 59%. The use rate went from 1% to 7%. So up 6% in the week. Yeah, three muskies might even be S tier next time we look. Speaking of S tier, Tornado is still S tier. I've said it so many times here on the channel. I'll say it again. I think that uh, that Tornado is the most dynamic card ever added to the game. I think that we almost underappreciate how powerful Tornado is because, well, we're used to it. We're used to Tornado. But think of think just think of the card. Not just talking about King Tower activations and how that changed the entire game, but also how powerful it can be with a, as a combo card to so many different cards inside the game right now. Uh, it, it, it's insane, right? I mean, even the giant skeleton, baby dragon, I can go through half these cards, right? So I think that Tornado is incredibly strong. Valkyrie to me is still S tier. Still one of the strongest ground cards in the game, despite that very, very, very small haircut to her overall stats. She has a 21% use rate right now, so her win rate is hovering at 49%. So she's maybe, maybe just based on that, I should go A. But in my mind, in my mind, subjective opinion here. I would go S, but we'll go we'll go A because maybe it did have a little bit of an effect on her overall win rates at least. But she is being widely, incredibly widely used. Uh, Wallbreaker is still super solid. I'll go A tier. I mean, there are two Elixir win condition. What more do you want? Uh, Witch is is falling off, man. I'm gonna go F tier on Witch. She is one of the lowest cards in the game, third lowest to be exact, with a 33% win rate inside the game, 3% used rate. Bats very good DPS air uh, card. Can't get get rid of bats obviously with a log or bar barrel, so you have to have zap or some sort of response to them, and they just do a lot of damage, right? A tier, uh, Queen S tier, S tier, easy. Uh, hey, he's back. The Golden Knight from F tier to A tier. Could probably even make a case that he belongs in S tier as well. Actually, I'm going to make that case. I think he's just back, right? He has a use rate of up 9% to 12% overall. Win rate 57%. That's really high. Uh, Skeleton King, same thing. All three of the OG champions are S tier right now. And in, in, as they should be, right? Uh-oh. I told you I was going to eat crow and say that I got something wrong later on in the video. How about the Mighty Miner? He is abysmal. Really, really bad. Win percentage, 37%. Use rate, 5%. 37% on a champion. That's awful, awful, awful. <laughs> Mortar, one of the better cards in the game right now. Uh, the other end of the spectrum, right? The third best card in the game, 59%. Uh, Win rate, 
Only a 5% use rate, but it's always been that way with Mortar. But Mortar's still an annoying and incredibly good card, both on, both on offense and defense. Tombstone is, is going to be A tier here. They did do a nerf to Tombstone, slowed the spawn rate a little bit, but the card's still incredibly good right now. My favorite spawner, personally, I will put the Furnace in B tier. Very, very solid card. The... Uh, the god, uh, what's that card? Goblin Brawler lives in a goblin cage, Ash. There we go. Goblin Cage. I will put B tier right now. Not as powerful as it once was, but still a very effective and good card. You could almost say the same thing about Tesla. Tesla has really slid down uh, with the Inferno Tower buff. I'm actually going to have to go B tier with Tesla. In challenges, Tesla, and latter, it's a little shy of 50% uh, win rate. In challenges, 43% win rate on Tesla. It's because of Earthquake everywhere, right? That's part of the reason. Uh, Goblin Drill, though, has seen a massive resurgence. Man, so many things have changed in just the matter of a couple weeks, right? 57% 50, win rate right now. Use rate up 2% to 4% use rate. So players adopting slowly but surely a lot more of the card. Uh, a bomb tower will go B tier. Really solid, uh, obviously, defense. Going to go the same thing. Inferno tower, going to put it in. It's, it's either A or B as well. I'll put it B tier right next to the uh, bomb tower. Uh, gob, I think that all the spawners, well, not all the spawners, but I think the two traditional spawners, Goblin Hut and, uh, and Barbarian Hut, Barb Hut, I'll put it F, I'll put average on Goblin Hut on C tier, Expo right now, we'll call it B tier, it's not trash, let's see what the, uh, the stats say about the Expo, 48% win rate, 2% use rate. That's low for Expo. Usually Expo has a 2% use rate around that number, but the win rate is usually above 50%. I don't like that. And again, I think it's testament to uh, Earthquake and more importantly, Mirror Earthquake decks being very prominent in the meta. I'll go B tier for Cannon in 2.6. You know, a couple other decks kind of use Cannon. One Archer Queen Royal Hogs deck uses Cannon as now, now as well. And... Can't believe I'm going to say this. We'll go A tier for the Elixir Pump. A whopping 58% win rate. 58% win rate. Right up there with Three Musketeers. Surprise, surprise. The use rate is approaching 10%. On the Elixir Collector. Are you kidding me? Uh, guys, there it is. There it is. Every card in the game. Uh, what do you agree with me on? What do you disagree with me on? Thank you guys for, so much for watching until the end of the video. Big shout out to Glitch, to Bren Chong, and to Stats Royale. Where you can see the stats on any of these cards any day that you want. Check that out in the description below. Thank you for watching. And as always, take care, guys. Oh, yeah.